Hey everyone, what's going on? I thought that I might try a little something new today and do some unboxings of a bunch of items all together. I just happened to receive a bunch of cool new stuff from my friends at Star Ace. Uh, they wanted me to check out some of their soft vinyl figurines. Uh, there's this gigantic Kong 2.0 from uh, Kong Skull Island. There's also the next in their line of Defo Real Figs. I think this has been out for a while. This isn't exactly new. And this one, the Bride six scale figure from Kill Bill. So uh, rather than do an individual video for each one of these, I thought it might be fun just to treat it like a Christmas at uh, Terry's house and um, just unbox them all for you and just give everybody my thoughts on what I think of them. Um, I don't think anybody here minds if I go ahead and start with a big one, right? Let's go ahead and get this Kong guy out of his box. Okay, so this guy just comes wrapped in plastic. Nice little plastic clamshell. There's his base right there. You can probably get a good look at that. You're gonna get a better look at it here in a minute. This, I can already tell, even while it's still wrapped in plastic, that this thing's pretty cool. Instructions, in case you don't know how to put a figure on a base. And, uh, let's see here. Wow, this is really nicely packaged. I straight up am treating this like Christmas. This is ridiculous. Oh, I think I was just covering the microphone with that. Oh well. All right, very attractive base on this guy. I'm gonna get some photography of these things later on, so you'll be able to see some of this stuff up close, but there's clearly a broken seafaring vessel right here, a bunch of trees, because Takong is uber tall in Skull Island, as befits a beast who's meant to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with kaiju sometime in the near future, one assumes, one has heard. Wow. Yeah, this guy's pretty mean looking. Nice details on the fur. Uh, it fits nicely in the footprints on the base and clearly no need because he is a, um, a vinyl figure and doesn't weigh a lot. It still weighs about meh, three pounds, four pounds, somewhere in there. I don't know with the base. But once you get him in place there, then he's uh, yeah, he's good to go. You can see he's got that telltale uh, ship's propeller in his hands. That's kind of wild. I'm not sure. So this must be a different boat than the one he got the propeller from because that's clearly out of scale. Or it's just meant to be, you know, out of scale. There's a, you don't need to have things totally to scale. Uh, by way of example, I give you the Darth Vader um, figure from Hot Toys that has a really awesome Bespin themed base, which uh, is not to scale with the actual environment from the film. And it's not meant to be, it's just meant to evoke it. Uh, similarly, I think that's what's going on here with this. Uh, these uh, trees, more like bushes. Man, massive looking thing. This is really cool because I had a Kong piece a long time ago and I sold it during some hard times. And I've always missed it. I've always wanted to have a Kong piece. I've been a fan of King Kong since, as long as I can remember, since the 70s, uh, when my dad introduced me to the original 1930s classic. And uh, that made me fall in love with uh, Scott, stop motion. Um, so it'll be good to have Kong back on my shelf. I'm, thank you, Star Ace, for sending me this to look at. It's really, it's really worth having. Really worth having in a display. Uh, but I'll get some photography of this, and, uh, and then we'll, uh, you'll, I'll see what I'm talking about here. Now, um, what do you think? Next up should be, what, Lord of the Rings? Everybody's... Probably, if you haven't been exposed to, to Star Ace's Defo Real line, I highly recommend checking them out, especially if you're a, um, you're a collector of Funko Pop, for instance, or any other soft vinyl collectible figures. Then this might appeal to you. Because similar to that line of, similar to those line of collectibles, those lines of collectibles, what you get is a figure with a small body and an oversized head. But what Star Ace has done, this is really, really cool. You'll see this here in a second when I get this completely out of the packaging. 
without dropping it. Hint, hint. What Star Ace has done is they've taken this concept, they've taken this concept and they've they've added some hyper realism to the sculpting. So what you get is not, I'm just gonna reach over by way of comparison, my little, this is a Funko Pop of uh, the Incinerator Trooper from Star Wars, The Mandalorian. <laughs> oh God, I'm gonna put that away because it's a little surprise. But what you get is not this sort of stylized, this highly stylized interpretation of a character. What you get instead is <laughs> a highly stylized interpretation of the character that actually looks like the character in the films. Man, the first Defo Real figs that I ever experienced were from their Kong Skull Island line. So you can find those out there, those exist. They've got uh, Kong, obviously, and they also have the Skull Crawler. There are several varieties of them, and by several I think there's three. So, <laughs> there's a great fire base, look at that. There's a great Moria fire base going on. This thing is so cool. I wasn't planning, I, I knew I was getting this, and I, I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do with this, but uh, this is just neat. I've been trying to think of, my dogs really wanna come in. <laughs> Dobby, come on. Dobby, come on. No? The door is shut. He can get it open because it doesn't shut all the way, but he just really has to put his mind to it. Um, getting back to this though, look at, okay, this is really, really cool. They've really married this um, translucent resin to the more, to the more opaque plastic elements. And I'm not wearing my, the proper glasses for this kind of gig. I should be, I should be wearing my, my office glasses, but I'm instead wearing my, going out and doing things around town glasses. But um, that's the technical term. But I'm looking, I fully expected when I saw this to see that there would be some gapage happening between the flame and the Balrog's body, and there's just not. It's seamless, it's absolutely seamless. And it's beautiful and it's fun and I mean, these two guys look like they need to be hanging out, right? There's like, you know, two fire brothers right here. I mean, it's, <laughs> they just get together at the fire club, talk about all the fires that they started, you know, all the creatures that they've incinerated. Yeah. <laughs> Until a child comes along and, whoo, takes this guy out of the picture. But uh, let's get rid of him. This is, it's not about you, incinerator trooper. I'm actually genuinely more excited about this Balrog than anything else that came in today. It's just so neat. Um, I can't wait to see what I can do with it in photography. So yeah, just, I'm probably going to just be superimposing the photographs over myself yapping. So yeah, I'm, I'm just <laughs> over the mood about this. This is great. This is a lot of fun. This is going to find a nice tidy little corner. I don't have a Lord of the Rings display going on, which is ironic because uh, Lord of the Rings has got what got me into collecting back in the original days of Sideshow's partnership with Weta when they were churning out that awesome line of six scale statues. It's a line that Weta is actually continuing now to, to great effect. Um, I've seen some pretty remarkable stuff come down the pipe and they're really, really prolific with it. Um, but, uh, you know, getting back to the Star Ace, <laughs> I'm just not gonna be able to shut up about this. Especially not when I bring in this guy. It's a little Gandalf. It's a little big-headed Gandalf the Grey. <laughs> Telling him that he shall not pass. Oh God, I'm just sitting here playing with my toys. Ah, this is fantastic. Okay, but enough. Look at that little Gandalf the Grey. He's just wicked cool. That is a big freaking home run, everybody. If you're looking for, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan looking for something cool and fun to put on your desk, just to advertise to all your coworkers, your office mates, what you're all about. Look no further because this is just awesome. 
<laughs> I can't believe I'm more excited about this little goofy defo real thing than I was about Kong. I mean, I dig the Kong piece and it is staying. <laughs> oh, man. I, I'm telling you, Star Ace, you may very well have won me over to vinyl toy collecting with these offerings here. This is... The cool thing about vinyl is that it's affordable. It's small. So it doesn't take up a lot of your shelf space. And it's... They've really come a long way with it, right? I mean, look at how detailed this is. Just didn't expect that at all. Okay, well. All right, so that's... That's great. <laughs> we got these. But now we're going to work our way over to this lady right here. I um, usually like to open these things from the bottom. Um, I don't know why. I mean, it's like... I think I read somewhere once that when you open it from the bottom, it maintains the integrity of the tape at the top. Which has already been broken because I cut it earlier too. Um, but... Uh, You come. All right, Uma. So when you cut the tape at the bottom, it, can, it maintains the integrity of the tape at the top. Um, that's mainly for people who are interested in displaying boxes as well. Um, if you want to keep the tape at the top intact, then what that does is it gives the appearance of a box that has not been opened. Um, obviously, it's not meant to be anything nefarious, like uh, like to fool somebody that you might actually sell a figure to later on down the line. Because any fool who um, buys a figure from somebody thinks th and thinks that he's getting a perfectly mint in box figure unopened is going to realize when he looks at the tape at the bottom that this thing's been opened. So it's not because of you know some sort of um, plan to sell this thing as a mint in box figure somewhere down the line. It's just an aesthetic choice uh, for people who want to uh, display the boxes, which I don't, which raises the question, why do, I, why do I do this? And I think that it's just because uh, I have no idea. Um, it just seemed like a good idea when I read it. I was like, yeah, that's kind of cool. That'd be kind of nice. And I thought that maybe somebody who was a box displayer later on down the line might appreciate it. That is a good sculpt. The eyes are right on. Now, mind you, I haven't watched Kill Bill in a long, long, long time. Volume one or two. But, uh, yeah, it's... Um, this body is great. Very firm joints. What's going on under here? It is a seamless figure body. That's why it feels so good. Yeah, I think this is a seamless figure body. Now, that I'm, I'm feeling seams over here, but there's parts of it that are definitely, yeah, like if you, not to be pervy, but if you open this, you know, you get a nice little belly navel thing going on there. I mean, so this is a sculpted body here. Interesting little joints here. I've never seen a body like this before. I don't know if uh, Star Ace has created a new body here or not, but um, I'm seeing that uh, that rotates in an interesting way. Is this? No, that's solid. That's just like a leg extender there. That is interesting. I've never seen anybody do it this way before, but it's very effective. Not quite the freedom of movement that you would expect from, say, a ball, a ball and socket joint in the ankles. But, again, very effective. And we got great torso twisting action going on here. Oh, man. You know what? I'm going to have to pose this for you guys. Hope everyone's okay with that. <laughs> I wish I could tell what was going on down here in the shoes. Because I, I don't want to break it. But it looks like you just have some uh, swivel action here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there is a... Wow. Okay, so you can rock the foot back and forth and you can swivel it there at the ankle. 
which when you think about it is kind of biologically accurate. Oh, that's really cool. And it's pretty stable. Yeah, that's badass. I probably shouldn't even get into the whole rooted hair thing. I'm not a fan of rooted hair at all. I don't care who does it. I mean, it could be Star Race, Hot Toys, who have you, what have you. I'm not at all interested in having to style hair on my figures. Uh, it's just a, it's just an aesthetic choice. Um, it's I don't even think it's a popular one. I think by and large most collectors prefer the rooted hair look. Um, I know that there are those who agree with me on the matter, uh, but it's and again I, I hesitate to even use the word agree because it, this isn't like two sides of a fight or anything like that. It's it's really just like I said an aesthetic preference, like rock over country sort of a thing. Just, you know, no one's right, it's just what you prefer, what reach, what touches your soul, for lack of a better word. Uh, it's good, good sealant going on here with this, uh, with this plastic covering protecting all the accessories. Let's take a look at this Hattori Hanzu sword. Ah, oh, that looks nice. Nice details in, in that, uh, Logo, uh, the sigil um, insignia, the Hitori Hansu insignia, insignia there. Will this go in? Yes, it will. And it seals in there nice and tight. I just felt that. I just felt it when I pushed it in there. It just had provided this nice snug grip. Now this is um. As you all know, I don't I don't like to tell people what to buy and what not to buy. Um, you make that decision. I just show you what I've got here, and you make that decision on your own. Uh, having said that, I I think that this figure, if you're looking for something that is made like a Hot Toys figure, and if that's something that you want to adhere to strictly, then... First of all, you're denying yourself options. But second of all, um, you're not, this may not be the figure for you. There is a, another level of detail uh, to a Hot Toys figure. And, and that's just how things are. Nobody can touch them. Um, everybody else has to do whatever they can. And I'm looking at this and I'm pretty excited about it. I just like the bold yellow. Like the this is this is the cool thing. I don't remember off the top of my head what sort of fabric the bride's motorcycle. Um, yeah, be really careful when changing these hands. You don't want to break the pegs. You know me. I like to break things. Actually, that's not true at all. I don't like to break things. I just do. I do it a lot. Let's go ahead and swap out this hand because I kind of want to get her holding the um, holding the scabbard. That's the thing is that we've got these hands that are <laughs> the death punch, <laughs> five finger death punch or whatever the hell it was called. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure that's what that's for. Or, or else it could be the whole three-fingered... No, that's not the three-fingered thing, because she's clearly using four fingers. I don't know. I can't remember. But uh, this is clearly meant to be a scabbard hand. There we go. So, I'm thinking two hands. What can this do? Oh, look at that. That's just really, really... a. It's really an agreeable figure body, guys. You know what would have been really cool for this? A helmeted head. Even though she's like only using that helmeted head like for two minutes. So this is going to be like a defensive posture. Which I think she gets in for like all of two seconds before she just kills everybody. That's what brides do, bitches. I like the thing about this rooted hair on this figure. Having having said how much I dislike rooted hair in general, the thing about this rooted hair is that it comes to you fairly well styled. Yeah. 
I don't think I need any of this stuff. Stand unnecessary with this figure, except for those who really, really, really want to make sure, want to protect their investments. But when I get the photograph of this um, pose later on, it's not going to be necessary. So there she is. There's the bride. The by, by Starius. Pretty cool for all you um, Quentin Tarantino, Uma Thurman fans out there. And again, I can't stress enough that the uh, the portrait's great. They got her nose, they got her eyes, they got her lips. There it is. Now I think I might just have to do a giveaway with this figure. So, yeah, that is my new plan. My new plan is, in fact, to do a giveaway of this Bride Six Scale figure on my YouTube channel sometime in the next week. So be watching out. Uh, you're going to have to be a follower of the YouTube channel. And um, you'll have to leave a comment on this video. That's about it. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I hope you all like what you see here because I really do. And again, I'm really, really super excited about this uh about this Balrog and this Gandalf the Grey <laughs> that he comes with. It's really going to have an awesome little home somewhere in my home. And until next time, be good to your plastic. Whoa, you made it to the end? How are you even still alive? Hope you liked what you saw. If you did, subscribe to the channel. And if you're really hardcore, ring the notification bell. You'll be sure to know every time a new video is posted. That's about it. Until next time, be good to your plastic.